<laughs> Welcome to the first installment of Beer Reviewed Research. I'm Kasha. I'm Mikey. We're coming at you live from Beijing, China. We're in a brewery called Xing A Brewery. Yeah. We're both, right now, we're drinking the same thing. We're drinking their flagship uh, beer, which is called Air Apocalypse IPA. Air Apocalypse. <laughs> Tell them about why it's called their apocalypse costume. The menu said, said it all. It's actually quite nice. It talked about how it was kind of dedication, like like an ode to the city that they come from, Beijing. It's cloudy. It's an unfiltered IPA, and it's inspired by the personality of Beijing, but as well as the air that is so smoggy at times. I believe the gimmick at play is that the word the air quality is on the day in question, the cheaper the beer is on the menu. We came here yesterday, I don't remember how much we paid for it, but it was a pretty smoggy day. It was pretty smoggy, <laughs> it was pretty cheap. It's still quite delicious. What do you think? What, what does it taste like to you? <clears throat> now, some context is we are beer snobs from New England. And we felt immediately at home when we came here yesterday to check this all out. To be perfectly clear, <laughs> you come to China and a lot of what you get is same, same, um, I don't, I, I, green bottles, kind of Czech Pilsner-ish, mm, light, frothy. I think in any country you go to, you there's the beer that's like popular and everybody has been drinking for like tens of Maybe hundreds of years. <laughs> tens of years, tens sometimes. Of, tens of years. Sometimes um, dozens. But it's because of some kind of local slash national, yeah, like, like this is know, our beer kind in, of thing. In the States, everybody drinks Budweiser. In, in Trinidad and Tobago, everybody drinks Kareem. In Beijing, everybody drinks Yangjing. Yangjing, Yangjing <laughs> or the other one <laughs> sounds like the same thing. But this place, Jingye, is something special. It's something completely different entirely. The moment we tasted this beer, yeah. we felt felt uh, unfairly that we had had a taste of home. It was like New England opened a brewery in Beijing. I immediately fell in love with it. But the thing with this place is, yes, it does satisfy all the things I love about IPAs as a New Englander, as a beer snob, as a beer lover. But it also kind of puts a little bit of its own Chinese touch into some of these beers. Um, yesterday, alongside their park lips, we also tried... The Perception. The Perception IPA. And I tried to check in on Untapped and try to write about it, and I got so excited. I wanted to write so much and talk about how it, the Sichuan pepper was just like such a beautiful touch, and how it gave me everything that I wanted out of an IPA, it made me feel at home, but at the same time, it was the perfect addition and, and the perfect kind of just spin on something that I love that was truly unique and made me remember this place. And I, now I want to buy a sweatshirt because. I really love this place. If you're already starting to feel suspicious about the titles of these beers, you you are correct for noticing that they're both made up words. <laughs> Air Apocalypse and Perception are yeah. not in the English language, typically speaking, which is unfortunate for locals. Our waiter yesterday came up to us and asked us, like, uh, what does this word mean? Perception. I was like, well, it's a made-up word. <laughs> do we know it's if pepper and perception? Do we know if one of the owners is uh, American? That is my understanding. It, it can't be a coincidence that this these IPAs are just good. You know, they're just we are snobby New Englanders, and we know our beer. We're very spoiled with our beer, and, and they're named this place did like, not disappoint. The names are like wacky English puns. So it would be weird if that was something they thought of. Maybe not. I could think of a pun in Chinese. Going with what I said about the perfect little Chinese touch to an American beer, beer lover's classic, we also had the toasted almond porter. It was called the Lulu. It's called Lulu, a heavy meal <laughs> of a beer, the almond. I've never had almond as part of a porter, but it was just delicious. It was perfect. I didn't realize the porter was just going to be my dinner. <laughs> and it, it kept me full. Yeah. I was I was a satisfied little guy staggering out of Jing A yesterday. Well, we got some delicious food in front of us here. 
From what I understand is that uh, the American owners also have a love of barbecue. So we got ourselves some barbecue pulled pork sandwiches, little sliders. These are very delicious. And I can't wait to dig into this uh, half rotisserie chicken here with my fries. As you can see in the video, it's kind of munching down on the fries a little bit already. I couldn't stop eating. But I, we're super hungry. We've been walking all day. We climbed the Great Wall of China today. Yeah, the so, whole thing. So we are uh, ready to eat. We were running up and down this, the Great Wall of China this, all day. This looks very good. And this has been very good. We've been chomping away at this stuff. And it is, you know, we're beer lovers and we're also barbecue lovers. And this has not disappointed so far. So, let's see. I think I'd like to order another beer to discuss the other Yeah, beer. yeah, we can totally... And we're back. Awesome. I ordered the Mandarin Wheat Ale, like at the Flying Fist IPA. I wanted every beer that I had here to be perfect and beautiful and lovely. Uh, I don't love this beer, but I feel like that might be beef because I don't really drink a lot of wheat beers. But if I did, I imagine the man. I can taste the mandarin. It's like a very much of a little hint, well, just a little dab of a little flavor. And it's still very drinkable, very much a good beer. But I enjoy. I prefer more hoppier, more flavorful kind of deals. I like the name Flying Fist. It first stood out to me when I looked up there. Plus, it had the letters IPA on the end of it, which is why I chose it. And if it's IPA, it's good enough for you, right? Sure, and it's six point five percent. And as I looked at the board, it felt like the best decision. Flying Fist IPA is aptly named because flying it is. It is very light, high flavor. It, it, it soars right into your mouth. <laughs> it's light, but at the same time, it has a bite. It's light with a bite, which is the fist part. The fist hits you with that 6.5. It's drinkable. You're welcome to try it. You can take a big gulp and find it more. It's drinkable. But there's that fist, which makes it so uh, important. Yeah. It's not unlike yeah, this the is Airpocalypse. The, it's not as hoppy as the Airpocalypse. No, the Airpocalypse is it's, hoppier. Um, it's more filtered than the Airpocalypse is too, as you can see. It's a little bit more but... But yeah. generally speaking, when the beer has some kind of threatening, lethal word in the name, like Apocalypse or like Leviathan oh, or Fist, <laughs> or knife, or you know something scary that sounds like it's going to be dangerous. They're trying to in, they're trying to impart to you that there's more alcohol in the beer. The flying fist is a six point five, so I think that's actually a little bit more than the airpocalypse. It's good though. It's it's your classic, very drinkable, no frills, kind of straight to the point. It's a straight to the point kind of baby IPA. I like this one. It's very good. What do you think of the mandarin wheat? Like? Well, it's fruity. The word Mandarin should sell that right off the bat. If you don't want to fruit the beer, you definitely don't want this. It kind of tastes like beer mixed with juice. But maybe that's what you want. Maybe that's what you've been looking for. Maybe if you're somebody that is into wheat beers and you like a little Mandarin touch to it, you'd probably like this. But I'm not quite sure why I picked this. Probably just because I was just attracted to uh, the Mandarin touch. I enjoy these beers, but if they have that little Chinese flair to these classic styles that we love. Bottom line is if you're in Beijing, you're going to be looking for a while for good beer until you come to Xing'e. Because there's not really a lot else going on as far as I can see. Though it is a big city and we haven't seen all of it. I immediately fell in love with this place the second I walked in. I was just like, this is exactly what I want. And when we came to Beijing, the first like, 36 hours we were here, we're like our stomachs weren't exactly feeling awesome. It was an 18 hour flight, yeah. so it was a little tough to just start drinking beer. It was tough. But thank God we found this place, they really eased us into it. We're getting pumped up with cheap wine on the, on the plane, but you know, that's not quite the same. My stomach was happy for the first time coming here and 
trying some of this beer and being like, oh, this is it. Having, this is the good stuff. This is having the a stuff. bunch of like Czech pilsners in different disguises is not my idea of like a local beer scene. Like having some Czech pilsner just wearing your country's like logo is lame. That's I honestly don't know if Beijing has or China in general has a ton more other craft breweries. If this is the only one, yeah, that's good enough for me. This is a really it's good a good one. it's yeah. a good first step. There has to be more than this. There's but gonna I mean, be more, but this one's very special. It really, can't all I be. Love Jing, I think I'm gonna get a sweatshirt. Like this, I really like to visit in this place. It can't all be Ichiban and Sapporo out here. There's got to be more. Um, this is way better than Ichiban. Ichiban is Japanese for number one. I just listed two Japanese beers instead yeah. of a Chinese beer because I can't remember any Chinese beer. Yangjing. Yangjing, because that's how much they leave. That's, that's the kind of impression they leave on you. Yeah. Anyway, this has been super awesome. Uh, if we're ever back in Beijing, I'm sure we're going to make our way back here because this place is really special. So, cheers to that. Bye. Let's do a 3 2 one on that. Yeah, can I, yeah, can I have the that. shortest angle? That's better. So we decided to get a couple more. You don't have to say that. They don't know we ever left. <laughs> and we're back! <laughs> I did say that we're gonna go eat this now, so bye. Why do we have to let the viewers know that there's an edit? Whatever. Uh, as far as they know, we haven't moved the muscle. I ordered the... Add more content as we get on. Build onto this little Lego brick wall of bullshit. <laughs> This is this is good. I'm having fun. This is natural. You think we had a natural flow in yeah, here? Yeah. I kept wondering if my head was taking up too much screen space. I feel like this looks good too. This should just be where I am for the whole video. Up here, yeah. Hi, Kasha. Hi. No, we're good. <laughs>